Hello, hello. Welcome everyone. How are we doing today? Welcome to the University of Saskatchewan second annual virtual open house. Hello, hello everyone. I can't see if we have any any folks with us today. I can't see how many. So I apologize in advance for that. I can't see your names, but hello, hello. We are so excited to have you at today's University of Saskatchewan Apply on the Spot Admissions Workshop. How is everyone doing? Please feel free to use the chat function to let me know anything you'd like about yourself. We'd love to get to know our audience and the students that are interested in the University of Saskatchewan. Anything you wanna share about yourself, please feel free to do so. And you can also use the chat function to let me know if you have any questions today as I'm going through the uh, application process presentation. I'll keep an eye on the chat here today and make sure that I answer any questions that we might have. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started, but not before I make sure to share some contact information for us today, just in case you are interested in getting in touch with us at a later time, or we get interrupted, or you can stay until the end, whatever the case may be, Here's the contact information if you have any questions for our recruitment admissions and transfer credit team, as well as our University of Saskatchewan Language Center. And I'll tell you in just a hot minute here why I included that contact information and why that is important. But we'll go ahead and get started today. So as we gather here today, we'd like to acknowledge that the University of Saskatchewan's main campus is located on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. And we pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place, and we affirm our relationship with one another. All right, the university the world needs an application workshop guiding you through the application process at the University of Saskatchewan. So you are here today to our signature event, our open house, where you can explore what life will be like as a University of Saskatchewan student. We have tons and tons of booths available, tons of USASC representatives just eager to talk talk with you today and answer any questions you might have. Make sure that anything you're interested about at the University of Saskatchewan, you know everything you want to know about. All right, so we will move right ahead in today's presentation and talking about the University of Saskatchewan application process. The University of Saskatchewan, the university the world needs a fantastic university, as I just mentioned, located on Treaty 6 territory, but a university that is ranked amongst the top 100 university glo universities globally. So that is something that we are very, very proud of. And even more so, the fact that we're ranked in the top five in Canada in the study of a bunch of different uh, important areas of studies that you can see there on your screen. So we can come up with some, some really, really innovative solutions to the world's most pressing global challenges here at USAS, where we have a big family and a family that is constantly growing, probably will grow here today. We are almost 26,000 strong and representing students from over 130 different countries worldwide, over 3,000 international students at USAS. So great variety in the student body here at the University of Saskatchewan. And you may or may not Probably, if you're here today, be interested in the University of Saskatchewan's programs that we offer. So we offer over 130 different programs at the University of Saskatchewan, and we have kind of split them up into direct entry colleges and non-direct entry colleges. So all of our programs are offered through these 13 different colleges or faculties or school of, you might have, ch uh, you might have heard these terms interchangeably, but essentially they mean the same thing. We like the word college here at the University of Saskatchewan. So College of Education, College of Engineering, College of Arts and Science, College of Medicine, and so on and so forth. In today's presentation, however, we are going to focus on, oh, let me just go back there for a second. We're going to focus on applying to direct entry colleges that are available for students to enter directly after they're done their high school studies. So as soon as you have graduated high school, of course, pending that you meet the admission requirements for these programs, you are able to start direct entry college programs, not direct entry colleges, on the other hand, while while this is the reason that the University of Saskatchewan is the leading post-secondary institution in Saskatchewan and one of the top research intensive institutions in Canada, a member of the U15 and a medical doctoral university, are the non-direct entry programs. We are the only educational institution in Saskatchewan to offer these non-direct entry programs with the exception of nursing. However, 
these here programs, non-direct entry, essentially mean that students are not able to start them as soon as they're done high school. They're not able to enter into them just with high school study requirements. These programs require what we call pre-professional studies or pre-professional requirements before students are able to start into them. But today we're going to focus on direct entry colleges and applying to direct entry programs. Applications are open for fall 2022, starting in, the, in September of next year. And so before we start looking at what exactly is the application process at the University of Saskatchewan, how easy is it? Easy peasy. It'll take 20 minutes at max. We're going to be able to get through it here today. I want to make sure that we talk about some important deadlines for you to keep in mind in case you're not able to start an application here with us today. I do want to make sure that you know when you have to submit an application by. So December 1st. December 1st is the first really, really important deadline here at USAS. Not only is it the deadline to apply for early admission for this competitive programs here, kinesiology and bachelor of education, but it is also the deadline to apply for admission to any program, any direct entry program, in order to be eligible to apply for best and brightest entrance scholarships. Now, these are the most prestigious and highest valued scholarships at the University of Saskatchewan. To be eligible for them, you have to have applied for admission by December 1st. So if you're in grade 12 now, if you graduated high school, you're applying for an undergraduate program, you want to make sure you apply by December 1st, folks, in order to be able to capitalize on all of these scholarship and funding opportunities. Now, if you don't apply by December 1st, at least, please, please, please apply at least by February 15th in order to be able to apply for the competitive entrance awards. This is a whole host of varied scholarships with, a, with very different eligibility criteria to them. And you want to make sure that you're able to apply to these. In order to be eligible to apply for competitive entrance awards, you have to have applied for admission again to any direct entry program by February 15th. Okay, so keep that in mind. And February 15th is actually also the deadline to apply the regular admission deadline for these competitive programs that are listed here. So February 15th, you want to apply by February 15th, no matter what, okay? And there it is. It's also the deadline for international students to apply for admission in order to be eligible to apply for these international uh, scholarships here. Now, another really, really important deadline the other international student scholarships. So we have the Canadian Curriculum Schools Awards, the International Schools Awards, the Maple Leaf, but also the International Excellence Awards, the International Baccalaureate Excellence Awards. Again, to be eligible to apply for these or to be considered automatically for these, my apologies, you want to have applied for admission to any direct entry program by February 15th. Now, May 1st, May 1st is kind of our last deadline to apply for programs. This is the deadline to apply for admission to uh, rolling admission programs. And some of the programs are listed here as well. And it's also the sign up uh, to uh, join learning communities. If you have any questions about learning communities, join me in the admissions and scholarship booth. I'll answer any questions you have about that. And it's also the deadline for international students to have applied for admission for the College of Arts and Science. So May 1st, okay? December 1st, February 15th, and May 1st are some of the deadlines that you want to keep in mind. Now, you might you might recall when we started the presentation earlier today, I provided the contact information for recruitment, admissions, and transfer credit team, but also for a University of Saskatchewan Language Center. And that is because we do offer joint admission for students that are academically qualified and they meet the admission requirements for their academic program, but do not meet the English proficiency requirements. So for these, we offer joint admissions and you can apply, you can start an application, joint admission application with me here today. And this is to an English for academic, academic purposes program. So essentially joint admission entails students starting their academic program while learning those English language skills that are required to go through university studies. And we have four different levels to our EAP, English for Academic Pro uh, Purposes program that lead to that university degree and being able to graduate with that university degree. And all of this takes place through the University of Saskatchewan Language Center. So that's why I wanted to make sure you have that contact information as well, because the students at the University of Saskatchewan Language Center do receive that continuous support. And of course, uh, those connected tutorials that are able to, to help students 
learn those English language skills that are required for university studies. And we also have a student success team that is there and prepared to help students achieve their success and make their university and their English studies experience more meaningful and more successful. Okay. Without any further ado, let's talk about how we apply to direct entry colleges. Here today, we can start an application with Ali. And the first step to apply is to find a program. Find a program that you're interested in studying. So again, we have a number of different programs offered through the colleges of agriculture and bioresources, arts and science, education, Edward School of Business, engineering, kinesiology. They're all here today. You can join their booths, learn more about their programs, and choose a program, find a program that you'd like to apply to. The next step to that is to learn the admission requirements and deadlines for that program. And we have a really, really neat tool online at admissions.usas.ca, just under um, admission requirements and deadlines, where you can actually input your highest level of education, where you finished high school and where you're studying high school, and it will populate for you all of the admission requirements and deadlines for every single program specific to your situation. It's a really, really wonderful tool. The next step to that is to apply for admission. And we can start an application here today with me. We can start doing that here today by creating an account at apply.usas.ca. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to go to a new a uh, web page, open a new page in your browser and go to apply.usas.ca. Our entire journey at USASC applying to an undergraduate program starts at apply.usas.ca. After that, you can absolutely update your profile at any time once you've created that account. And, and once you've submitted your application, you can check the status of that application. If we need any more documents from you, some required documents, if we made a decision, perhaps, all of that will be updated in your account, your application account. That's where you can also submit supplemental items. Some of them you have to mail in. Some of them you have to make sure that they're provided by your high school or the last institution that you've attended. Some of them you can apply direct, or you can upload directly to your apply account. And after all that is done and over, you've submitted your application, your required documents, we've reviewed your application and made a decision. You've been admitted to the University of Saskatchewan to your program of choice. You can go ahead in that account and accept your offer of admission. One thing I wanna note here is that we encourage students to accept their offer regardless if they're, you know, if they've already made a decision of whether or not to attend USASC. So, this year is a very different year. We're living in very uncertain situations. And so I encourage you to accept your offer admission so that we can hold that seat in your program for you. If you decide at a later time that for whatever reason you're not able to come to USASC or you've decided to join another program or whatever the case may be, it won't impact this in any way, shape or form. But we do encourage you to accept that seat to be able to hold it for you. And of course, foremost, Foremost in this entire process is congratulations to you once you've submitted your application and you've been accepted to USASC. And we invite you to share your USASC moment. So tag us on any social media platform, hashtag USASC, and share your proud USASC moment. Okay, we're going to get started again at apply.usask.ca. This is where you're going to be able to start the application process by creating an account here today. So Open up a new web browser and go to apply.usas.ca and you'll be able to see a page that looks something like this. It'll look like the login page. Now, if you've already created an account, perhaps you've already started an application and you're just here today to be able to get a little bit more information about how to go through the application process, go ahead and log into the account you've already created. If you don't have an account, you can create an account here today input all of your information, close down that page, and then go into your email that you've provided with us through your create account page. Go to that email, check your email because we will have sent a uh, account confirmation email. Open that email, confirm your account, and you'll be able to log into your account. So that's the very first step. Create an account so that you're able to log into that. I'm going to answer some questions that I see we have into the in the chat here today about the um, IELTS requirements. Yes, we do require it uh, in order to be able to prove English language proficiency. That is one of the accepted methods of, of proving English proficiency through a standardized test. 
absolutely. But there are more than one, there's more than one method to, to prove English language proficiency. And you can see here today what those methods are. Okay. So once you create an account, you can log into that account and start an application here with us today. So once you've created that account, you go and log into the account. This is what the account will look like. You will essentially have some options to see what the account settings are for you. Start an application, book a campus tour with us, and look at some of the events that we have um, uh, being offered throughout the fall term. When you start an application, you'll be asked to choose what type of application you want to start. So for the purposes of today's open house apply on the spot admissions workshop, we're going to talk about uh, direct entry programs and applying to direct entry programs. So we're going to choose undergraduate program, bachelor's degree, diploma or certificate program, again, in any of the direct entry colleges or programs that we talked about here today. You can also choose joint admission. Okay. The undergraduate programs that require previous post-secondary studies, these are those non-direct entry programs, those big name professional programs we talked about. And of course, because we are a research institution at USASC, we do offer graduate programs as well. And here's that English studies program only. So if you're only interested in starting that English studies programs, that English for academic purposes program to the, through the University of Saskatchewan Language Center, you can start an application just for the EAP program today. Of course, we also allow students to take classes as a visiting or audit student. But again, for today, we're going to choose undergraduate program, bachelor's degree, diploma, or certificate. And when you created your account, it most likely asked you to indicate what program you're interested in and the start date that you'd be interested in starting that program. And based on that, it will populate an online application that you can start. So for me, Easy peasy, I'm going to start 2022 fall term for the next September intake, Arts and Science Bachelor of Science application. If, however, you perhaps have changed your mind, you know, I'm interested in engineering after all. I want to apply to engineering. You can indicate that you want to start an application for a new term and program. So you can start that there or continue an application with the study area and start term program that you indicated when you created your account. Once you do start the application, the application will have a menu right at the top here where you can review the application and very easy, kind of like all the applications you might have filled that up until now, we have different categories. So applicant information category, biographical information, English proficiency, we'll talk about English proficiency in a second, your academic history. So this is where we talk about your high school studies, again, for the purposes of our presentation here today, your planned program of study. So what you're wanting to apply to, and then some additional information that we're looking for. Now, before we move any further, some housekeeping items. Keep in mind that at any time while you're filling out the application, you can save the application, close down the window, go have supper or lunch or go for a walk and come back later and finish the application. You can always go to the previous page, but in order to advance in the application, just save it and continue to the next page. Now, we're not going to talk about the applicant information or biographical information very much here today because it's very, very straightforward. Like any other, you know, gym membership you might have applied for or grocery store membership, whatever the case may be. So applicant information and biographical information, things like your name, date of birth, where you're from, things like that. So very, very straightforward. So we're going to dive right into English proficiency. So we see here that we have some international students that are interested in applying today. And this is how you can indicate whether or not you meet English proficiency. You can indicate that you do not currently meet English proficiency or one of the ways in which you will prove English proficiency. And I know that some of the folks here are interested in knowing whether or not the IELTS standardized test is, um, is admissible for proving English language proficiencies. Yes, absolutely. You can indicate that you have completed an accepted standardized test of English proficiency like the IELTS test select that. And then of course, you'll be required to provide your scores for that IELTS test. So yes, this is where you can indicate that if that's the way you're going about uh, meeting English proficiency. However, however, I do have to mention that there's a whole host of other ways in which you can meet English proficiency, uh, completing post-secondary university or college studies in English, uh, completing um, an alternate approved qualification, English language training program at the University of Saskatchewan, our University of Saskatchewan Language Center. So not just standardized tests, but if that is the way that you will be meeting English language proficiency, you can certainly indicate that in there. Okay, 
Moving on to the academic history portion of the application. So in the academic history, some of the things that we'll be looking for is whether or not you've already applied to USASC and your high school education. So this is where you can indicate what high school you went to. If you're still in high school, you can indicate what high school you're currently studying at. If you've attended more than one high school, you can indicate that in here as well. And you can, you can search it through our tool that we have here for the high school uh, name. You can put in the, just the city that your high school is located in or start filling out the name of the high school and it should populate a list for you. If you can't find your high school in that list, you can absolutely just add the information yourself in there, okay? If, again, if you've attended more than one high school, you can add another high school or secondary education program that you've attended. And in here, you'll be able to indicate the month that you began attending and the month that you will attend to if you have graduated from this high school, if you will be graduating from this high school, or you just attended it for a short period of time. So like myself, for instance, I attended one high school here in Saskatoon, and then my parents relocated, and I moved to another high school in another city. So I would indicate both of those high schools here in the application. So just keep that in mind. If you do have more than one high school that you attended, you do have to indicate it here. If you attended online school, typically online schools are different than, um, than the programs offered through regular in-person classes. So if you attended online school, you can absolutely add that in here. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Such a good question. Such a good question. I'm just looking at the questions we have here in the chat. Yes, the IELTS can be important for the admissions process if that is the way that you are proving English language proficiency. Um, and yes, you can apply as an international student without the IELTS if you do satisfy the English language proficiency through one of the other methods, for instance, uh, curriculum related exemptions. So again, having having completed post-secondary studies in English, having uh, completed secondary studies in English as well. All right, moving right along. So we did answer the question about online last year. Now, if your online classes were offered by your high school, there's no different transcript, no different institution that you attended. No, you don't have to indicate this. However, if you attended a completely different institution, for instance, here in Saskatoon, we might have Saskatoon Cyber School, online cyber school. So we would indicate that in here, for instance. Now, moving into the planned program of studies, this is the meat and potatoes of the entire application. What do you want to apply to? So the first thing we're going to indicate is the academic level we want to apply to. So undergraduate for the purposes of our presentation here today and our first choice program. Now, it will absolutely explain to you the difference between a bachelor's degree, a diploma program, a certificate program. So you do have to indicate that you read the bachelor degree selection information, what the difference is between a bachelor of arts, a bachelor of science, a bachelor of arts and science. So it does have that breakdown there for you. You can review that before you select your program. But then you will be able to select the first choice program and the second choice program. We'll talk about that in the second. As long as you indicate that you are applying for the 2022 fall term, we will be able to assess your application for next September, our very next intake for students that are currently in grade 12, for instance. If you're applying to the Wichita and Theater program, you can again indicate that in the application, as well as the location where you want to study. Now, you may or may not know, you can access University of Saskatchewan programming at a number of locations across the province of Saskatchewan. We partner with regional colleges, affiliated colleges to offer programming. So you can start and in some cases even finish entire degree programs, certificate programs, the program, diploma programs at one of our off-campus locations, one of our other campuses aside from our main campus or one of our regional or affiliated uh, colleges. So. If you're wanting to study here in Saskatoon, by all means, select the U of S Saskatoon main campus. But if, for instance, you're wanting to start at Parkland College in Yorkton or at Great Plains College in Swift Current, you can indicate that in here as well. OK, I did mention that you can indicate a second choice program. Two things, only two things I have to mention about this. Isn't it great that if you're interested in more than one thing, perhaps, you know, I can't decide between engineering and arts and science. Do I want to be a teacher? Or do I want to go into arts and science and just explore my options? You can indicate two programs in your application, two things. We always recommend that your first choice program is the one with the higher admission requirements. So for instance, um, engineering 
if you're interested in engineering and arts and science, engineering first and arts and science second. Now, we will not look at the additional program and consider you for that additional program unless you want us to do so if you've changed your mind or if you don't meet the admission requirements for your first program. Does that make sense? So we only look at the second choice program if you want us to do so. So you applied for art and science, your first choice, or engineering, your first choice, arts and science, your second choice, and you decide, you know what? It's going to be arts and science. I'm going into arts and science. I'm going to be a psychologist. You can always give our admissions team a call and let them know. And we can look at the second program and just consider you for your second choice program. However, if you can decide between two programs, put them in there, put them both in there, put the one with the higher admission requirements first so that we can look at that one first. Once we've um, assessed that application, if you don't meet the requirements, we can then look at your second choice program and see if you meet the requirements for that. Okay, now the last little piece of information that we're looking for in the application is some additional info. So things like whether or not your uh, family attended University of Saskatchewan, uh, whether your English language is the language that you normally speak at home, and, and third party representative information. If your parents or your sister or your siblings or your friend or your high school counselor or your teacher is perhaps helping you with your application or is wanting to surprise you and pay for your application fee. Make sure that you give them third party representative authorization. Otherwise, we can't even tell them whether or not you've applied to USASC. We want to make sure that we protect your privacy. So in order for us to be able to to basically share any information about you, even the fact that you apply to USAS, we have to have special authorization for each person that you want us to share that information with. Now, once you've submitted the application, you completed the application, all of the different categories, you submit the application and then pay the application fee. Very, very importantly is that you check your supplemental items and documents. So right up at the top, when you go into your account, you can review your application, but the other part is that you can review your supplemental items and documents. And this is where we will populate if we need transcripts from your school, if we need perhaps a, a passport from you for international students, for instance, and check your email, the email that you provided through your application. We will be in touch with you through that email. So check your email often and submit those supplemental items and documents that we're looking for. Now, I just want to let you know that we do have a whole host of other events that we offer at USASC outside of open house throughout the year. To find out what these events are, you just have to go to admissions.usask.ca and look under events. If you're interested in attending another USASC event, come talk to me in the admissions and scholarship booth. I'll let you know all about it. Again, our entire journey to becoming a USASC student and joining the pack starts at apply.usask.ca. I hope that you were able to start an application here today. That is, however, the end of our presentation session. And congratulations to those of you that were able to create an account, start an application here today, perhaps submit your application. And please, 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 if you have any questions, don't hesitate to visit us in the admissions and scholarship booth. We can absolutely help guide you through any inquiries that you might have. I will leave our contact information here on the screen. I want to Thank everybody for joining us here today. We will be back at 2.30 again with this presentation in half an hour. Um, again, I apologize that we're not able to answer any graduate specific um, questions in today's session. Come join me in the admissions and scholarship booth and we can talk a little bit more about grad studies. Classes, applying to multiple degrees, admissions and scholarship booth. Come join me there. I will be there. I'll pop right back in there as soon as we're done here in a minute. Thank you so, so much, everybody, for joining us. I'll see you in the admissions and scholarship booth and right back here if you have any more questions in half an hour.
Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Thank you so, so much for joining us and welcome to the University of Saskatchewan second annual virtual open house 2021. How is everybody doing here today? We'll get started right away with the University of Saskatchewan Apply on the Spot admission workshops. We'll walk you through the application workshop here today at USAS and see what it is exactly that the application process looks like at the University of Saskatchewan. Before I go ahead and get started, a little bit about myself. My name is Ali, Ali Chertez. I'm a student recruitment officer at the university and also a graduate of the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Arts and Science and a proud alumnus of the university. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I see that we have some questions coming in the chat here today. One of my colleagues is with us and will be sure to be answering questions in the chat that I'm not able to grab and answer on the screen for you. I see that there are some questions about graduate studies. Today's event and this particular application workshop is focused on undergraduate studies at USASC. If you're interested in graduate studies, because of course we are one of Canada's top 15 research institutions, by all means, please join me in the admissions and scholarship booth and I can share a little bit more information about graduate studies at USASC with you. But for the purposes of our presentation here today, we'll go and get started in talking about the application process at USASC for undergraduate studies. Before we do so, I just want to make sure that I share with you our contact information in case you have to go before we're done the session or we get interrupted or anything of the sorts. I want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with us, both our recruitment admissions and transfer credit team, as well as the University of Saskatchewan Language Center. And you might be wondering, why, Ali, why are you sharing the University of Saskatchewan Language Center contact info with us today? I will tell you in just a hot minute here while we go through our presentation why that is important. So I want to make sure that you have that available for you. I'll share it again at the end of the presentation, but I'll leave it here for another second or two. Grab a screenshot, take a picture of it, jot it down. Make sure that you know how to get in touch with us if you have any questions after the session. All right, without any further ado, here we go on learning how to apply to USASC. Such exciting times. University of Saskatchewan, the university the world needs, where I join you to be what the world needs and join us in seeking solutions to the world's most pressing global challenges. All right, at the University of Saskatchewan, as you may or may not know, we offer over 160 different program areas and we offer them through 13 different colleges or faculties or schools of those terms are interchangeable, whichever you prefer. But at USAS here, we like colleges. So we call them the College of Arts and Science, the College of Engineering, the College of Medicine, and so on and so forth. And we are able to offer all of these programs because as you know, Hopefully, we are one of, uni of Canada's top 15 universities, a member of the U15 group of top research intensive universities, and are also a medical doctoral university here in Canada. Now, for the purposes of the presentation here today, we'll be talking about direct entry colleges and how to apply to direct entry colleges, because what does direct entry mean? Direct entry means that you can directly enter these programs as soon as you are done high school and you meet the admission requirements for these programs. Non-direct entry, on the other hand, does mean that you cannot directly enter these programs as soon as you're done high school. They do require what we call pre-professional studies that students have to complete and have under their belt before they can go ahead and start these programs here. These uh, pre-professional study requirements can vary between one year and full degree programs, like for medicine, for instance. And we can certainly talk about those. Join me in the admissions and scholarship booth if you have any questions about non-direct entry colleges and those programs. But we'll talk about how to apply to direct entry colleges here today. Applications are open. You can start an application with me right now for the next fall intake, fall 2022 intake, starting in September of next year. So for those of you that are in grade 12 or have just recently graduated high school, we can start an application here today and in less than a month, perhaps even have an answer. Now, some important dates, however, before we get started in talking about how exactly to apply to USASC, here's why we're encouraging students to apply early. 
because the early application deadline for our competitive programs is December 1st. So only ooh, a month and a little bit to go here until December 1st. And the first deadline to apply, again, early admission deadline for kinesiology and the Bachelor of Education program. The regular admission deadline for those programs, kinesiology, Bachelor of Education, and the combined bachelor program is February 15th. So that will be the next really, really important date that you want to keep in mind. So first, December 1st, next, February 15th, really, really important dates. And then after that, May 1st, May 1st will be one of the last deadlines for students. This is the deadline to apply for admission to uh, programs that have rolling admission. So Egg Bio, Edwards School of Business, Engineering, the Indigenous Teacher Education Program and the SUNTEP Program in the College of Education. May 1st is also the day to sign up for learning communities. If you want to know more about learning communities, by all means, you can join any of the booths that we have here today pretty much, and they can direct you towards the information you're looking for for learning communities. Or you can join me in the admissions and scholarship booth, and I'll tell you all about learning communities. May 1st is also the deadline for international students to apply for admission to the College of Arts and Science. Domestic, 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 here we go. Uh, Canadian students typically have until later on in the summer to apply for arts and science, but it is always best practice to apply as early as you can so you have that decision in your pocket. You can start making your plans and start preparing for that transition to university as soon as possible. Now, remember when I shared the University of Saskatchewan Language Center contact information at the start of the session, and you maybe were wondering, why do I need that? Why, why is that important? Why would that be there? This is why, folks, because we do offer joint admission. So for those students who are academically qualified for admission, so students that meet the admission requirements, for academic programs, but do not quite meet the English language proficiency, we do offer joint admission through the English for Academic Purposes program at the Language Center. So this is a program through which you can start your academic program while learning those skills that you need, uh, English language skills that you will need in order to be successful through your university degree. So studying ESL at the same time that you are starting your academic program. An absolutely fantastic program, fantastic opportunity for students that are wanting to get ahead, get started, meet those English language proficiency requirements while getting a head start on their degree. And this English for Academic Purposes program does have four different levels, foundation of English and academic advantage that do lead to completing that university degree. So if you don't think you meet English language proficiency requirements at USASC, you can certainly, certainly think about applying for joint admission. We can start an application here today in two minutes for joint admission to an academic program and the English for Academic Purposes program at the University of Saskatchewan Language Center. Language Center, which offers a whole host of opportunities for their students and support throughout the year, both personal and academic. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in starting your USAS program with us here today. Perhaps don't meet the English language requirements. All right, like I promised, we're going to talk about applying to direct entry colleges, undergraduate programs at USAS and that whole process of applying and joining the pack, joining the Huskies starts with finding a program. So finding a program that you're interested in. We have a whole host of different booths here today. Go and check them out. Learn more about the programs that we offer at USAS. Find a program that interests you, and we can start applying for that here today. Perhaps you've already found a program. The next step will be to learn the requirements and deadlines. But I promise you, if you apply with me here today, you're ahead of the game. You are ahead of every deadline there is. The first deadline is December 1st, so you will be ahead of it. You just have to make sure that you learn what the requirements are for your program. And you can do that really, really easily by going through admissions.usas.ca requirements and deadlines. We have a fantastic tool online where you can indicate your highest level of education, where you completed your education, and it will populate the requirements and deadlines specific to your circumstance for every single program that we have. Really, really neat tool, one-stop shop access to all of this information instead of having you know 50 different op uh, program pages open. It's all available all on one page. And the next step to that will be to apply for admission, and you can start 
by starting an application with me here today. The admission and scholarship booth, I see there's a question about that. It is in the pavilion. The event pavilion with us here today is a, one of the booths that we are offering. You can join me, I'll be there. We can talk all about admissions and scholarships. So let's start our journey to becoming one of the pack, joining the pack at USASC and becoming a Husky at USASC by going to apply.usask.ca. So that whole, whole journey starts at apply.usask.ca by creating an account. Or if you already have an account, you can log into that account and start an application with me. And I will tell you exactly what to do in that application to make sure that you know how to fill it out. The application process is easy peasy. I promise you it takes no more than 30 minutes, perhaps. So you can start it with me here today. I'll tell you all the things you need to know, and then you can complete it and submit it in no time. All right. New browser, open up a new browser, perhaps take your phone out or another device or go on the same device and open up a new browser and go to apply.usask.ca. That's where we will start here today. Once you create a profile and create your account, you'll be able to update that profile after you've created it. So don't worry too much about that there. We can go ahead and get started. And that's where you'll be able to check on the status of your application. So once we create an application and perhaps even submit it today, you can check on the status of the application where exactly we are at in the application assessment process in that account. And that's also where you can submit some of the supplemental items we might be looking for from you for that application. Through that account, of course, is where we also allow you to accept your offer for admission once that you are accepted to your program of choice at USASC. Now, we encourage all students to just go ahead and accept this offer of admission, even if they're not sure that they will be able to or want to study at USASC by the time the term actually comes around next fall, September 2022 go ahead and accept your seat because that will hold your spot in your program. If you change your mind, you're not able to come at a later time. You just have to let us know there are no penalties for you. There's no deposit to hold the seat, but we will hold the seat for you. If you accept your offer of admission, you can always withdraw at a later time. And of course, once all that is done and over, you've been accepted. Congratulations. We invite you to share your USASC moment and tag us, hashtag USASC, on any social media platform, we are so, so proud of our students and we'd like to celebrate with you. So share your USASC proud moment. Okay, without any further ado, this is what we're all here for to do here today. So go ahead and start an application at apply.usask.ca and you'll do that again by either creating an account or logging in. If you've already created an account, you can just go ahead and log in. If not, it's right there under the login button to create an account. Easy peasy, just a little bit of personal information, your name, date of birth, email address, and things like that. It'll take just a minute to create the account. Close down the browser once you've created the account and go and check your email. We'll go and check your email because, ooh, here we go. Check your email because we will have sent an email confirmation to you. So you'll be able to go open up that email, confirm your account, and go and log into your account. So once you've logged into your account, you can go ahead and start an application. It's just that easy by going to, guess what? Start an application. So going to the start application tab here, you can choose an application for what you want to apply to. Now, you can choose an undergraduate program, joint admission, like we talked about, because we do offer joint admission, an undergraduate program that requires previous post-secondary study. These are those non-direct entry program folks, those big name professional programs. You can also apply for a graduate program, but for the purposes of our presentation here today and the event here today, we'll focus on undergraduate programs or joint admission. Now, we will ask you if you are a current or returning USAS student, you can indicate that there, and whether or not you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. Once you've filled out that part of the application, you can go ahead and select which online application you want to start. When you created your account, you most likely filled in, you know, I'm interested in this program, this area of study, I'd like to start at this time. And based on that, it will have already populated an application for you that you can start. So I indicated that I'm interested in a Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Science. I want to start next year, 2022 fall term in December, in December, in September. Apologies, folks. And so we went ahead and created that application for me. So now I can either continue with that or select an entirely new term and program. You know, I've changed my mind. 
I'm going to be an engineer. I'm applying to engineering at USASC. I can select a new term and program and start a completely different application. Once that I've selected which application I want to apply, this is the application, folks. This is it. An area where you can review the application, all of its different categories, and where you can submit and review those supplemental items and documents that we may require, okay? Easy peasy peasy application. It'll take you, like I said, no more than half an hour to complete it. It has a number of different categories. So your applicant information, your biographical information, a little bit about English proficiency, the meat and potatoes of the application, your academic history, where you studied in your high school, and your planned program of study. So what exactly is it that you want to study at USASC, along with a little bit of additional information to get to know you a little bit better. So that's how we get started. Now, to navigate through this application, you can always save the application, close it all down, shut off your computer, go for a walk, go have dinner, go spend some time with your family, and come back later and finish the application. So you can always do that through your account. You can always go to the previous page and just make sure that you filled out everything correctly, or if you forgot something, you can go back and add it in. But to move through the presentation, you just want to make sure that you save and continue. So you save what you already completed and continue to the next portion. There we go. Now, I'm not going to go through the biographical information or the applicant information because it's very, very straightforward, like every gym membership you might have filled out or a grocery store application membership, you know, your name, where you're from, your date of birth, your email, things like that. We'll talk about the campus. I see a, a question here about the campus choice. I'll talk about that in just a second, but I want to make sure that you know what to do for the English proficiency portion. So for English proficiency, you can always check what our English proficiency requirements are and then indicate how you will meet those English proficiency requirements, how we will prove English proficiency. You can indicate that you do not currently meet it, or perhaps you've completed an accepted standardized test of English proficiency, an IELTS test, for instance. So you can indicate that here. Or perhaps you completed post-secondary studies in English already. You can let us know that there, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about the academic history and the planned program of study because this is really the, the areas where students might get a little bit confused, might be unsure about what to fill in. So I'm going to make sure that you know exactly what this is asking for. So the academic history is looking for your, again, high school information, or if you've attended post-secondary, your post-secondary information. So it's looking for what exactly is your education history before you started USASC? So it's going to ask you whether or not you've previously applied, perhaps you applied for last year, perhaps you've already started an application, and it will ask you about your high school or secondary education history. Now, this is where you can fill in exactly what high school you went to. You can start by filling in the name of the high school. I went to Aiden Bowman Collegiate here in Saskatoon. So I might start typing out Aiden, and it'll all of a sudden populate that list and populate Aiden Bowman Collegiate for me. Or I can simply type in the city where my high school is located, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And here's a list of all of the high school in Saskatoon that I can choose from. So populate that in there. If you don't find your high school in this list, no worries, don't worry at all, don't panic. There is a spot where you can say school not found and you can simply input that information yourself. So the name of the school, the address of the school and things like that. Now, if you attended more than one high school, for instance, myself, my parents relocated halfway through high school. So I attended high school in another city here in Saskatchewan, as well as in Saskatoon. So I would add both high schools that I attended. If perhaps students attended cyber school, online cyber school, an online program that is separate from your usual high school that you attended, you would fill that in here as well. So you want to know all about your academic history, your high school history, or if you attended post-secondary, there is a place that you can indicate that in here as well if we're starting an application for students that have attended previous post-secondary studies. Now, in the planned program of study, this is where you actually put in what you want to apply to at USASC, what program you want to apply to. Caveat here, really, really, really big thing to keep in mind is that you are going to apply to a type of program, not a program major. So I'm going to apply to, for instance, the College of Arts and Science Bachelor of Science program, not a Bachelor of Science and Psychology. 
So we're not going to worry about the major parts, psychology, uh, economics, whatever the case may be. We're going to worry about the college and the type of program. So College of Arts and Science, Bachelor of Science, College of Engineering, Bachelor of Science and Engineering, so on and so forth. And you can see here, you can put in your first choice program after you select undergraduate studies. For the purposes of our session here today, we're going to look at an undergraduate studies application process. So undergraduate studies, first choice program, arts and science, kinesiology, agriculture and bioresources, education, whatever it is that you are interested in, wherever your passions lie, you are going to select that. If you're not sure what the difference is between a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Science, a diploma or certificate, there is a Bachelor Degree Selection Information section. So you can review that and see exactly what the difference is between a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts and Science, for instance. And you can then let us know that you've reviewed that section and are indeed familiar with what those represent. Now, your admit type, high school, current or graduate, this means essentially that you're either still in high school or you've graduated high school again for the purposes of our presentation or applying for undergraduate studies for students that have either graduated high school or are currently still in high school. And your admission term, of course, 2022 fall term. It is not open for 2023 fall term or 2024 for those of you that are grade 11 or grade 10. So we're going to choose the next possible term, 2022 fall term that we can apply for and the location. I did note a question in the chat here about location. Now, you may or may not know, you can actually access USAS programming at a number of locations across Saskatchewan, not just the USAS main campus here in Saskatoon. We also have a campus in Prince Albert and we build colleges and also have affiliated colleges where you can start and in some cases even finish entire degrees use as degree programs or diploma programs or certificate programs that are not in saskatoon so for instance uh plan college in yorkton if perhaps you live close to yorkton and you have family you want to move in with close to yorkton you don't have to relocate to saskatoon you can start a programs in yorkton or swift current or larange or regina whatever the case may be okay so this is where you can indicate that if you're interested in studying at our main campus here in Saskatoon, this is where you would select that you would like to study at the U of S main campus, the Saskatoon main campus. Now, there is a little bit of additional information that we might look for from you, such as whether or not you want to declare as a St. Thomas More student. St. Thomas More does have a booth here with us today. If you don't know what that means, what is St. Thomas More College? What do they offer? What, how can I enrich my education at USAS through STM? Please, please check them out. Go and make sure to chat with somebody from the STM booth and they'll be sure to let you know how exactly this is beneficial to your education at USAS by declaring as an STM student. Now, if you're not sure what it means, you can also check that out in the application. If you indicate no in the application, we can always change it at a later time. So don't worry too much about it. But second choice program information. This is very important, folks, here. So I do want to make sure that you know what this means. Now, when you apply to USAS, you can actually indicate two programs that you're interested in. For instance, if I myself, you know, I, I'm just not sure. Do I, do I want to be an engineer or do I want to apply to arts and science? I really just don't know. Let's try applying to both, perhaps, and seeing which one I get into. That's one way that you can look at this. Another way is if perhaps you just haven't made that decision yet and are not sure how you're going to meet the requirements and the deadlines, you can put more than one program choice here. We recommend that your first choice program is always the one with the higher admission requirements, okay? Now, we will not look at the second choice program unless... You ask us to because you change your mind, you know, you tell us, you know, I put my first choice program as engineering, but I really, really think I want to be an arts and science student. Let us know and we'll just consider you for your second choice program. The only other way we'll consider you for your second choice program is if you don't meet the admission requirements for your first choice program. So this is where this becomes really important. There's a lot of students that just aren't quite sure, you know, I want to apply to kinesiology, but what if I don't get in? have a backup plan. Your second choice program is that backup plan, okay? So certainly be able to, uh, you'll certainly be able to indicate both programs in your application, fear not. And that's kind of what, what the difference is between first choice and second choice. Now, 
And the additional information, you know, we'll be looking for a little bit to get to know you if you have a definite career in mind, if you weren't born in, if English language is perhaps not the language that you speak at home. For example, for me, it is not. We speak Romanian at home. So I'd be able to input that in here. And you, SASC, can get to know me a little bit better. One of the most important parts in the additional information section, however, is the third party representative. Folks, if you have somebody that is helping you with your application, your parent or your siblings or your friend or caretaker or your teacher or your counselor, please, please, please be sure to give them third party representative authorization in order for us to be able to disclose anything about your application to them. You know, we have a lot of instances where a student will go ahead and apply and then perhaps their parent or their friend want to surprise them by paying their application fee. So they'll call us and they'll say, you know, uh, Ali Smith applied. I'd like to surprise her. I want to pay her application fee. Could I please do that? Unfortunately, we're not actually even able to let that person know whether or not you've applied because of privacy concerns. We want to be sure that we protect your privacy. So unless you give us specific authorization to release your information to a specific person, we cannot do so. So if you're getting anybody to help you with your application or you want to disclose any information about your application to anybody, just be sure to give them third party representative authorization. And that essentially is it folks. That's the whole application, 20 to 30 minutes, easy peasy. Once you finish the application, you finish filling in all of the fields, you can go ahead and submit it and pay the $90 Canadian dollar application fee really, really important once you submit the application and pay that fee is that you check your supplemental items and documents and you check your email often. The email that you provided us with in your application, check it often, every day, multiple times a day if you can, because we make these decisions fast. So we might be, you know, contacting you, letting you know that we need some additional items and documents for you to provide us with. So in your application portal, your create account portal, you can go to supplemental items and documents and see exactly what it is from you for your application. Some of them you'll be able to upload right in that section there. Some of them you, we may need official documents for it. So you might have to get um, the institution to send them directly to us, for instance. So students graduating from Saskatchewan high schools, going to the Ministry of Education website and having your transcripts requested to be sent directly to USAS from the Ministry of Education, okay? Now, check your email often because that's also where we will let you know when we've made a decision. So you can go into your account, check what that decision is, and once you've been admitted to your program, accept your offer of admission, congratulations, you have joined the pack. And that is it, folks. Easy peasy application to USAS undergraduate direct entry programs. Now we have a whole host of other events offering throughout the year that you can join us at. Check them out at admissions.usas.ca, just under events. Book a drop-in Q&A appointment with one of us. Come to an application workshop if you perhaps have further questions. Uh, join a USASC Express, apply on the spot application workshop. Come to a USAS Spark session if you if you're looking for direction and you're just not sure where to start and what program to choose. So tons and tons of different programs we offer throughout the year. But your journey at USASC, becoming a USAS student, all starts at apply.usask.ca. I will leave our contact information here with us today, just just in case. But I will be in the admissions and scholarship booth in the pavilion. If you go back to the uh, event platform, just to the pavilion, exhibitor pavilion, you can find us as one of the exhibitors, admissions and scholarship booth. If you have any further questions, you can contact us, our recruitment admissions and transfer credit team, or the USLC, the University of Saskatchewan Language Center. Thank you so, so much, everybody, for joining us here today. I hope that you are able to at least create an account, perhaps even start an application, maybe even submit an application with us here today. I will be back at 3.30 in half an hour. We'll be doing another apply on the spot admissions workshop if you have any other questions. In the meantime, I'll be in the admissions and scholarship booth with my colleagues. We'll be there to answer any questions you might have, let you know anything you want to know about USASC. Thank you again so, so much, everybody. Thank you, Danny, my colleague Danny, for answering all of the inquiries in the chat here today. I see that we've had so many questions. 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. My name was Ali Shirt. It is. It hasn't changed. My name is Ali Shirtez. And it was a pleasure being with you here today and walking you through the application process. I hope to see some of you in the admissions and scholarship booth. I see lots, lots of questions about that. So I will log right out of here and the session and meet you in the admissions and scholarship booth. Thanks again, everybody, so much. Enjoy the rest of the fair.
Hello, hello everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending where you're joining us from here today. Welcome and thank you, first and foremost, for joining us at the second annual virtual USASC Open House 2021. Woo! We are here, folks. Thank you so much, everyone that has come and visited the platform today and chatted with our exhibitors, stopped in for live information sessions. It is just so great to see everyone. We'll go ahead and get started with the third and last USAS Apply on the Spot admissions workshop here today. Last chance to apply with me as I walk you through the application process step by step. So without any further ado, we'll go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I can't talk anymore. Go ahead and get started. My name is Ali Shertez. I'm a student recruitment officer at the University of Saskatchewan with the student recruitment admissions and transfer credit team. I've been in my position for a number of years now, but I'm also a University of Saskatchewan graduate from the College of Arts and Science and a very, very proud alumnus. I'm just so excited to be with you here today and walk you through the application process as USAS applying to an undergraduate program, direct entry program here today. It's going to be easy peasy. We'll get right into it. I just want to make sure that I leave our contact information on the screen for you for just a minute here to make sure that in case we get disconnected or you're not able to stay till the end, you have our contact info and know how to get in touch with us if you have any questions, if there's anything we can do to help you out with applying to USAC, with your application or with your program once you are admitted, let us know. And I've also included the information for the University of Saskatchewan Language Center, our USLC, for a very, very specific reason. I'll tell you exactly why in just a hot minute. So we'll go ahead and get started and talking about the University of Saskatchewan. Now, if we get interrupted, perhaps here today, you're not able to stay until the end. You're looking to learn more about USAS. You're not exactly sure where to start. Join us for one of our upcoming events. You can find them on admissions.usask.ca. So again, just that website there, admissions.usask.ca, right at the top under tours and events. If you go to events, you can join us for a USASC Sparks, perhaps, webinar, uh, where you can find some direction if you're not exactly sure what program to start in at university. Maybe you have a whole host of interests and passions, and you're not exactly certain, you know, what should I apply to? We can find that direction with you in a USASC Sparks program or in an admissions and programs information session. Now you are in an apply on the spot application workshop with us here today, but perhaps if you need any further assistance after today, you can join us in one of our upcoming application workshops or use us express apply on the spot event. And you can always book a Q&A drop in appointment with one of our recruitment officers to answer any and all questions that you might have. Okay. So let's start in talking about applying to the University of Saskatchewan, the university the world needs in one of the direct entry college programs. Now, as you know, at the University of Saskatchewan, we offer over 160 different programs in certain areas, offered through 13 different colleges. We have uh, the term college here, you you might have heard the term faculty or school of. These terms can be used interchangeably with like the college option. So we have the College of Arts and Science, the College of Engineering, College of Medicine, College of Law, and so on and so forth. Now, USAS is in fact unique in terms of offering this across the province for non-direct entry programs. This is what makes us the leading post-secondary institution in Saskatchewan and one of the top research intensive institutions in Canada. The fact that we offer these non-direct entry colleges and we're the only educational institution in Saskatchewan to offer these with the exception of nursing. However, non-direct entry colleges do require students to have some post-secondary study requirements completed before they can start these programs. So non-direct entry essentially means students cannot directly enter these programs or enter into these programs as soon as they're in high school. They do have to complete some what we call pre-professional requirements perhaps through a direct entry college, and we'll talk about applying to direct entry colleges today here at USAS undergraduate programs. Before we do so, and to also shed some light on why it is that everybody encourages you to apply early to university, 
because there are some really, really early application deadlines. December 1st being the first and most important. Not only is this the application deadline to have applied to any direct entry program, any of the six direct entry colleges, in order to be eligible to apply for best and brightest entrance scholarships, these are the highest valued and most prestigious scholarships that use us, upwards of $40,000, folks. But in order to be eligible to apply for those, you have to apply for admission to any program, any direct entry program by December 1st. And December 1st is also the early admission deadline for early admission to competitive programs in theology and education. If you haven't applied by December 1st, perhaps you're not needing to apply uh, for early admission to a competitive program, at least apply by February 15th. Please, please, folks, especially those of you that are in high school in grade 12 right now, at least apply by February 15th so that you are able to apply for competitive entrance awards. Now, these are a whole host of different awards with varied eligibility criteria that are upwards of $32,000. So again, no small chump change there either. You want to make sure you have applied at least by February 15th so you can apply for both Best and Brightest and Competitive Entrance Award. And February 15th is also the regular admission deadline for our competitive programs. So keep that in mind. May 1st, however, is the deadline to apply for our, our rolling admission programs. So a bio, Edwards School of Business, Engineering, our ITIP and Center programs in the College of Education. And it is the sign up date for learning communities. If you're interested in knowing more about learning communities, join me in the admissions and scholarship booth or really any booth that we have here today. Anybody will be able to talk to you about learning communities or direct you to the right person. May 1st is also the deadline for international students to apply for admission to arts and science. However, students really, uh, domestic students, we really have until later on in the summer to apply for arts and science, but it is always just such a good idea to apply early, be able to make your plan and, and prepare for that university transition early on. So you want to make sure you apply early, at least by May 1st. And remember right at the beginning that I provided all of the contact information for USAS and there was the University of Saskatchewan Language Center oddly on that contact information. Here's why folks, because you may or may not know, we actually offer joint admissions for students that qualify academically for our programs, but do not meet the English language proficiency requirements. Students would apply for joint admission to both an academic program and English for Academic Purposes program at the University of Saskatchewan Language Center, where we have four different levels, Foundation of English and Academic Advantage, to get you into that university degree. So again, you are starting both the academic program, the university degree, and the English, uh, uh, English for Academic Purposes program at the same time through joint admission. Fantastic, fantastic opportunity for those that don't quite need uh, English proficiency requirements but want to get started on their degree right away. And of course, all of this is available through the University of Saskatchewan Language Center, which offers both academic and personal support throughout the year to our students, as well as cultural awareness um, and activities to engage students and to introduce students to our culture, our way of life here in Saskatoon, Canada, and of course, while touching on all of those primary English language skills that you need to make sure that you have a successful university career. Okay, without any further ado, let's talk about applying to direct entry colleges at USAS here today, all the way from arts and science to kinesiology. The first step is to find a program. Find a program that you're interested in. Identify what that program is. Visit our booth here today. Talk to our representatives and come up with a program that you are interested in, you're passionate about, that you would like to apply to. The second step will be to learn what the requirements and the deadlines are for that program. And if you're applying with me here today, you don't have to really worry about any deadlines. You're ahead of every deadline there is. I promise you that, the very first of which is December 1st. You're even ahead of that. You're ahead of the game and to be the very first of your friends to get into university. If you're wanting, however, to learn the requirements for your program and make sure that you have all of the requirements for the program you're interested in applying to, you can go to admissions.usas.ca, again, admissions.usas.ca, just under requirements and deadline. We have a fantastic tool 
that can pull all of this information into one page, a one-stop shop access to information for you. So this is my little little trick for when I'm looking for information for all of the programs, and I don't want to have you know 50 different program pages open. I just go to admissions.usas.ca and I go to requirements and deadlines to the tool where I can put in what my highest level of education is and also where I'm completing high school. And then it will populate for me the requirements and deadlines for every single program, drop down menu. I can look at every single program all on one page. So definitely be sure to check that out. And after you do, apply for admission. We can start that process here today by going to apply.usas.ca. So I'll get you guys to go to apply.usas.ca, open up a new browser, grab that extra device that you have near you and go to apply usas.ca. You can still apply for early admission if you are transferring perhaps from another post-secondary institution. But again, for the purposes of our presentation here today, we will focus on undergraduate studies. If you're interested in graduate studies, my colleague has provided some information in the chat, and you can also visit us at the admissions and scholarship booth and we'll point you in the right direction. Once you have created an account and started an application, you can update your profile at any time at that apply profile, apply.usas.ca. And that's where you can also check the status of your application. Where exactly are we at in processing your application? All of that can be done through the account. And that's also where you can submit some of the supplemental items that may be required for your application. It's certainly where you can check what supplemental items we require for your application. And it's also the spot where you can accept your offer of admission once you've been accepted to your program of interest. So once you're accepted, we will send you an email letting you know that we made a decision. You can check your account for that decision. And once you've been accepted, we encourage you to accept your offer so that we can hold that seat in the program for you. If you change your mind or are not able to come at a later time, you can always let us know there's no penalty, no deposit for holding your seat. But accepting your offer does ensure that we hold that seat for you. So I encourage you to accept your offer, even if you're not sure if your plans may change at a later time. And of course, congratulations. We invite you to share your USAS moment. Tag us, hashtag USAS on any social media platform. We'd love to celebrate with you and share your USAS moment once you've been admitted to university. Okay, let's start the application process. It's easy peasy. It'll take you no more than 20, 30 minutes. You can start it here today. I'll tell you what it is that you need to know in order to go through it successfully. So the first step is to go to apply by USAS.ca. Again, just another web browser, another page in your browser, apply by USAS.ca, or you can get there from really any program page on the admissions by USAS.ca page. Once you're there, if you've already created an account, by all means, please go ahead and log in. You don't need to create another account if you've already done so, but if you haven't, and you can't log in because you don't have those credentials yet, you can create that account. It'll take a minute or two, easy peasy, just looking for your name, date of birth, and email address, really basic information. You can then close down that tab, go into your email, and go to the confirmation email that we've sent you. So as soon as you create the account, we'll send you a confirmation email. You can go and confirm your account, log back into your account, and we can start an application. It's that easy, that easy. So log in or create an account. Once you've created that account, close everything down, go and confirm your account through your email, and then log into that account, and then you can start an application. Now, in your account, in your account tab, you can see all the things that you've done through your account. You can book a campus tour with us. You can check out all of those events that I was talking about through the supply account. For the purposes of our presentation here today, we'll go ahead and start an application for undergraduate programs or joint admission to an undergraduate program. We talked about that and we do have that option. Now, of course, outside of what we're demonstrating here today, you can, of course, apply to a non-direct entry program. These are those non-direct entry, big name professional programs that we offer at USAS. Of course, we are a U15 institution and also offer graduate programs that you can apply to. You can apply just for the English uh, for academic purposes program as well. And of course, we also expect um, visiting and audit students as well. It will ask you if you're a current or returning USAS student and whether or not you're a Canadian permanent resident. So you can indicate that in there. 
and then we can go ahead and start the application. When you first created your account, it did ask you to actually indicate what area of study you might be interested in and when you'd be interested in starting your study in a new class. So based on that, based on that, the system has already gone ahead and populated an application that you can start today. You can continue with that application. So I indicated when I created my account that I want to start next year in the fall of 2022, September of 2022. I want to start in the College of Arts and Science, a Bachelor of Science program. So it populated that for me already. But I can also change my mind. You know, if all of a sudden I change my mind and now I want to be an engineering student and apply to engineering, I can choose a new term or program and continue that way. So select one of those two options, and then we'll move right into the application itself, which has six different categories. So you can review those categories in your application and also the supplemental items and documents that we require from you once you complete that application. Those will populate in the supplemental items and documents portion of the application panel. Okay. Now, I'm not going to talk too, too much about your applicant information or your biographical information. That's very straightforward. Just like when you fill out a gym application or a grocery store application or a credit card application, it's all the same, really. You know, your name, where you're from, your contact information, things like that, a little bit to get to know you. But a couple of things I want to mention here. You can always print your application. You know, if you're, if you're kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit old school. I like to see everything on paper in front of me sometimes. So I might want to print this out to make sure I have a copy of it that I can always refer to. But this is how I navigate through the application. I can always save the application, close it down, go for a walk, go have dinner with my family, go spend some time watching TV, whatever it is that I want to do, study for my finals, anything it is that I need, and I can come back later and finish the application. I can always go back to the previous page if I'm on academic history. And all of a sudden I realized, you know what? I need to change some things in English proficiency requirements. I can go back and change those. But if I want to just progress through the application, move through the application, page by page, once I complete one, for instance, applicant information, I will save it and continue to the next part the biographical information. That's how easy it is. Really, really straightforward. So I'm not going to go through the applicant and biographical information, but I do want to touch on the English proficiency. So in English proficiency, you can check what our English proficiency requirements are and then indicate whether or not you meet them and how you will meet those English proficiency requirements. For instance, if you completed post-secondary studies in English or if you have completed an accepted standardized test of English proficiency like IELTS or the TOEFL test, for instance, okay? Or you can also indicate that you will not meet the English proficiency requirements. Perhaps you're applying for joint admission, okay? So that's where you do that. And then you get to the, to the meat and potatoes, really the big, big parts of the application, which is your academic history and your planned program of study. So in your application history, it will ask you if you've previously applied to UCAS, perhaps you've already started an application. Now you're starting a new one. We don't need you to pay the application fee twice. Just let us know if you've already applied. We can perhaps merge those two applications. Um, then it will go into your high school, secondary education history. This is where you can select what high school you went to for how long and let us know in there. If you attended more than one high school, for instance, my parents decided it was a great idea to relocate us halfway through my high school career, so to speak. And so I went to two separate high schools. So I would put here both the one I attended in Saskatoon and the one that I attended in another city. Now, when I fill in my high school, I can just put in the high school name or the city. I went to Aiden Bowman Collegiate here in Saskatoon. It's no big secret. So I can start typing Aiden Bowman and select it from the list. Or I can just type Saskatoon and select from the list of high schools that are available in Saskatoon. If you don't find your school in that list, if you can't find your school, that's okay. You just click on the school not found button and you can just give us the information for your school and then we'll go look for it. Okay. Easy peasy, don't worry too much about it. If you don't find it, you can just populate that information yourself. Now, if you attended another high school, if you took um, online classes, perhaps, through cyber school, another institution, this is where you can add another high school or secondary education option. And again, 
how long you attended that post-secondary education or that secondary education option. If you graduated from there or not, for instance, I would put that I attended Aiden Bowman, I attended another high school, but I did not graduate from that other high school. I just attended it. I graduated from Aiden Bowman. So this, all this information I can populate in there. If you attended three, four, five high schools, you can add them all in there and let us know about it. Once you put in your high school, it will also perhaps ask you to fill in the classes that you are registered in for your grade 12 year. Don't worry too much about that. We will need your transcript regardless. It is just a really nice way for us to get that head start on your on your application and be able to see what you're already registered in before we receive your transcript. Okay, don't worry about that too much. We'll go right into the plan program of study because this is really, really essential here. This is what we're applying to, the program we're interested in. So first things first, we're going to choose that we're interested in, in the undergraduate academic level coming from secondary education into post-secondary. First step is undergraduate before we move to graduate. And for the purposes of our presentation here today, applying to direct entry programs, we're going to choose undergraduate programs and then our first choice program. Now, we do allow students to indicate two programs they're interested in, first choice and second choice. I will talk about second choice in just a second. For your first choice program, you indicate what the program is there. Now, a lot of students at this time come to me and they're like, Ali, I can't find economics. I don't see psychology in this list. I can't find civil engineering. What is happening? Folks, that is your major. At this point in time, at the application time, we are just asking for the college and type of program you're wishing to apply to. So the College of Arts and Science, Bachelor of Science program, or College of Arts and Science, Bachelor of Arts program, or College of Engineering, Bachelor of Science and Engineering, so on and so forth, okay? We will have a description right below that of all of the different options for bachelor's degrees. So Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts and Science. What are the differences between these types of degrees? So be sure to read through that bachelor degree selection information and then let us know that you read through it. And then you can choose your admit type and admission term. So this is what type of student are you currently? Perhaps you're in high school still, you've either graduated high school, you're still in high school, and you're looking to apply for next fall. So 2022 September fall term starts. If you're interested in the um, uh, which pro and theater program, you can indicate that there as well. And then select your campus location. So you may or may not know, you can actually start USAS programming all across the province of Saskatchewan at our main campus here in Saskatoon, at our campus in Prince Albert, at our regional colleges or affiliated college locations all throughout Saskatchewan. And you can indicate that here. If you want to start at Parkland College in Yorkton, by all means, indicate that in there, okay? All right, last but not least, additional program information for your planned program of study. Now, St. Thomas More student, what does this mean? Well, we have that information there for you. You can click on it and read a little bit more about what it means to self-declare as a St. Thomas More student. What is St. Thomas More College? By the way, they're here today. They have a booth here today. You can go and talk to St. Thomas More College representatives. They'll tell you about how you can enrich your education at USAS through SPM. If you declare no, and at a later time you want to change your mind, that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. We can change it later on, okay? Now, that second choice program. This is very important, folks. We have a lot of students that perhaps aren't sure what they want to apply to. You know, I'm interested in both engineering and arts and science. Can I apply to both at the same time? Yes, you can. Right here. This is where you can put in your second choice program. We also have some students that perhaps are not confident that they will get into their program of choice. So they're thinking, you know, why do I go get into kinesiology? What's my second option? Plan B, second choice program. So as it says here, if you don't qualify for admission for your first choice program, we will look at the second choice program that you've indicated. Also, if you change your mind and you decide at another time, you know what? Don't even bother considering me for my first choice. Just look at my second choice program. You can let us know, contact our admissions team, let us know, and we'll just look at the second choice program. So this is where that comes in handy, okay? Be sure to check that out. Be sure if you have a plan B or you're worried about getting into your first choice program, have that second option filled out. Have another option that you can fall back on 
could your first choice program not be available for you? Okay, then there's some additional information that we look for from you just to get to know you a little bit better. You know, if you have a definite career in mind, if uh, perhaps your parents are U of S alumni, if um, English is the language that you speak at home or not, for instance, for me, it is not. We speak Romanian at home. My mother has no idea what I'm talking about half of the time when I speak in English. So this is where I could let you guys know a little bit about myself here. Very important is the third party representative information. Very, very important. We cannot disclose any information about you. Even the fact that you've applied to anybody unless you've given them special permission. So perhaps it's your parents or your siblings or your friends or caretakers or school counselors or teachers or helping you with your application. Be sure to give them third-party representative authorization so we can chat with them and share your information with them. We have, you know, so, so often we have um, parents, for instance, that call us up and, you know, they go, you know what, my daughter Ali applied to university. I'd like to surprise her and just see her application to and get it out of the way. She's trying to do this all on her own. I'm so proud of her. I'd like to help her out a little bit. Unfortunately, we can't even tell your parents that you even apply to use us unless you give them special authorization, okay? So this is where you can do that. If you need any help, if you want to share anything about your application with anybody, give them authorization there. And that's it. That is all. Those are all the fields of the application. Once you've completed them, you can go ahead and submit your application. You can preview it before you can submit it and print it out and keep a copy of it or save it to your desktop. And then go ahead and submit your application and pay the $90 Canadian dollar application fee. Once you've done that, please, please, please check your email as often as you can. Set a notification on your phone to let you know whenever you receive an email. This is how we'll stay in touch with you. This is how we'll let you know if there's additional items and documents that we require from you. And then you can go in your account and check out what they are, okay? Some of them you can even upload straight to your account. Some of them we need official copies to come directly from the institution. However, some of them you can actually go ahead and upload yourself. So be sure to check your email often. We'll let you know that we've received your application, give you access to a pause account so you can start applying for scholarships and to live in new fast residences. And we'll let you know as soon as an, uh, a, a decision has been made on your application so you can go in and accept your offer. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. This is really all there is to applying to use that. Easy peasy, just a few steps. It'll take you no more than half an hour. Very, very straightforward. But if you have any questions, you can always, always get in touch with us. Here's our contact information. I'll be in the admissions and scholarship booth. If you have any questions today or after today, you can still get in touch with us with our equipment admissions and transfer credit team or our University of Saskatchewan Language Center team. If perhaps you're interested in that joint admission option or simply studying English for academic purposes at USAS. Thank you so, so much. I see there's been so many questions coming into the chat. I'd like to thank my colleague, Danny Freire, for taking care of all of those inquiries. Thank you so much for answering everybody's questions. This is absolutely amazing to have had so many people join us here today. I hope that you were able to at least create an account with us here today or perhaps start your application, maybe even submit your application and be one of the first of your friends to get into university. Thank you so, so much for joining us, everybody here today. This is it for our session. I will jump back into the admissions and scholarship booth. We can meet you there to answer any questions that you have. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. I hope to see you in one of our booths and thank you for coming and spending some time with us at the USAS virtual open house and learning a little bit more about where your studies could take you at the University of Saskatchewan. My name was Ali. It was a flip. It is Ali. It hasn't changed. My name is Ali and this is Howler and we're both looking forward to welcoming you to USAS. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.